during the tours, most of the men, we had a lot of fun with them. They'd just be doing this hilarious spoof on video, like, hello, he'd, <laughs> he'd, he'd cross one eye. Sometimes I think that if I try to imagine what it was like to be their age, then I'm able perhaps better to communicate with them. What would have been funny to me when I was nine years old? And so then I find myself becoming very childish. You know those little white statuettes of composers? Oh, yeah. He would he would have, you know, two or three of us. We'd go and he would hide them in the deepest places of the piano. And so we'd have to, you know, pull out, you know, Haydn, Joplin, and a porcelain cat, you know, a dog, just, you know, random things. Let's say we'd be doing the Messiah. So Handel, how do you like the piece so far? And then, you know, and then, he, yeah, he'd pick him up and, you know, he'd make a funny voice. And then Joplin, you know, he'd pick up Joplin and says, well, I think it needs more jazz. And then for the next accompaniment, he'd play a little bit more jazzy instead of, you know, the actual accompaniment of the Handel. <laughs> he had this sort of storyline of, um, what was it called? Um, um, Dick, Dick and Jane? Jane? Yeah, he would do Dick and Jane on the piano. No figures or anything, but just little stuff on the piano. Like, for instance... Dick, who had, you know, a very you know, low sort of song to him. You know, you could tell when Dick was around because there was a song. And Jane, who had a high fluttery one, the phone. Go really high on the keyboard and go ding, ding, ding. And it would sound just like a phone ringing. The dog, which trollop. was like a, yeah, trollop, trollop the, the dog, dog, which is a crazy little mm -hmm. sort of thing. And so, you know, Dick would call, you know, Dick, you'd, you'd hear the dun, 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 dun. And then he'd basically play Dick's and Jane's together. And so he'd start saying, well, uh, Jane, you know, you want to go on a date tonight? I heard St. Thomas Choir is performing Israel in Egypt. And so Jane would go, oh, yes, that'd be great. And then all of a sudden you'd hear the chal up. I will do anything really to uh, get across a point or to teach a technique uh, or a piece, be it musical or textual, so that the child remembers it, the child of any age. They grew up in small towns in Texas where nothing was going on, and his brother loves to remind us of the sort of things Jerry would uh, have happened when they were together. The parents would be downstairs and not having any idea that Jerry was upstairs ordering fertilizer manure to be delivered to the next door <laughs> neighbor's yards. Then they would wait for this delivery with incredible excitement and anticipation, hanging out the window and watching the frustration of the neighbor when all this arrived. It's just outrageous. I should have been since a reform school, of course. <laughs> Instantly, but, without trial. And the children, the children have caught on to, Jerry remembers this aspect of his life in a way I don't remember my childhood. Dr. Hancock would give us uh, little songs on the piano. These songs would be sort of according to our personalities. And say we were doing exercise in the morning and you know, we'd be doing scales. And you know, he'd start playing the scale with one hand, somebody's song in the right, indicating that that person would have to do it next. Yeah, so we, we would know each other by our tunes and by our nicknames. But the songs that Dr. Hancock gave us were right there. It, it seemed it's just that, you. Yeah, it seemed like in the first week, he would get to know us really well. To give an example or try out for a solo, he would say, Nathan, uh, and play my little song. Mine was Chicago. Mine was from an opera by Wagner. Um, I'm not really sure what it was called, <laughs> to be honest. Can you sing it? Uh, you could be very amusing about them. Um, there was one little, little chorister, very tiny. He said, watch him, father. Don't tread on him. <laughs> this, this sort of thing. And, and I, <laughs> I, I liked that, that side of Jerry. I, I always was close to Judy. I admired her, her, her skills. I loved their daughters. I helped one with her Latin. I married the other. I'd always clip off three days of my vacations to fly up to the Cape where they were on vacation, so that I could have three days every year with them. I would bring the vodka and they would produce the lobsters. We used to sit and chew the fat and laugh and swim and have good meals and good martinis and everything.
I uh, really had uh, a great sharing of, uh, of fun with this extraordinary creature. He would always put everything into um, humor, and um, I think that's one of the greatest things about Dr. Hancock. Everyone, I'm sure, just sees him as just like a figure that will always be cherished, and I will probably never forget him. Jerry's well known for uh, his saying how wonderful everything is, and uh, we, uh, we think, well, it can't really be that wonderful, but we realize what Jerry is about is that it's wonderful that we're trying because we're, we're all kind of together in this and trying to advance the cause of music. He's a very optimistic person. He really sees the sunny side of life. Wonderful. Exactly like that. That's wonderful. I can do it. I, only he can do it. I've always been very fond of larger than life words. So, for example, I love the word great, I love the word fabulous. But somehow the word wonderful always comes off the tip of my tongue most easily, most readily. And I, I, I don't know where it came from, except it's a fairly ordinary word, but again, it's a positive word and a hopefully a sincere expression of an outstanding feat or accomplishment or characteristic within another person. Jerry is many things. He's beloved by so many. Uh, he's generous. He's brilliant. And there is no other Jerry. He's absolutely unique.
I will now improvise on the celebrated hymn tune, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Sounds like a primer. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> and now for our next number. The St. Thomas Choir School. Oh, that's bum, bum, bum. The Choir School of St. Thomas Church is a unique... The Choir School of St. Thomas Church is a unique educational institution. <laughs> They will sing for us now a selection from Handel's Messiah, How Beautiful Are the Feet. <laughs> 